Hi there, I am Dr. Sam Ellis, and I am so excited to share with you my morning skincare routine for sensitive and rosacea prone skin. I'm a board certified dermatologist and I practice in the San Francisco Bay Area. Just for some background on my skin type, I tend to be kind of dry and a little bit sensitive because I have a skin condition called rosacea. That makes me prone to redness and sometimes little pimples or bumps, especially on my cheeks. And so that's typically what I'm trying to tackle in any skin routine, whether it's my morning routine or my evening routine. Also, I am in my early 30s and I just want my skin to look as glowing and plump and youthful as possible. And so that is something else I'm striving for in my skincare routine. This video is sponsored by Vichy and I'm really excited to talk to you about their Lift Active Supreme HA Wrinkle Corrector Serum and why it's a really nice addition to this morning routine. All right, let's get started. Getting down to business, we'll get the hair out of the face. The first thing I do in my morning skincare routine is just wet my face with water. I don't actually go in with any type of cleanser and people be like, but you put on a retinoid at night. Don't you need to rinse that off in the morning? And no, by the time you have slept on your pillowcase, that has either wiped off or absorbed into your skin. And because I have dry and sensitive skin, doing a cleansing step in the morning is just overkill. It can strip the skin of those natural oils and protective lipids that you build up in your skin overnight while your skin is sort of resting. And I want those there. I'm not trying to take them away. The only people that I would say maybe should consider a morning cleanse are those who wake up and have really visible oil on their skin or if you've been instructed by your dermatologist or other dermatology provider to wash your face twice a day. So I'm just gonna... Ooh, that's loud. Dip down here, splash a little bit of water on my face, and then just sort of pat dry. People will say, oh, you need to use like warm water in the morning to like open up your pores or cold water to close your pores. Your pores don't open and close. That is just such BS. Just put on the water temperature that's comfortable for you, okay? And then I'm just patting my face dry to get it prepped for my first actual skin product that I'm gonna put on it. The first thing I put on my skin in my skincare routine is a topical antioxidant. And I really like to think of topical antioxidants as a protective boost. Your skin encounters so many insults over the course of the day. That might be UV radiation, pollution, the byproducts of the normal cellular metabolism that your cells undergo. All of those things can lead to something called oxygen-free radicals in the skin. And these are just highly unstable molecules that bounce around and damage structures in your skin. And what antioxidants do is they essentially neutralize those oxygen-free radicals so that they don't have the opportunity to wreak havoc. The topical antioxidant that I am using today is the SkinCeuticals Floritin CF. If you have seen my holy grail skincare items on my YouTube channel, you know I talk a lot about the CE Ferulic by SkinCeuticals, but the Floritin CF is a really nice alternative to that, especially if you have sensitive skin. And the reason for that is instead of having 15% L-ascorbic acid like CE Ferulic does, this one has 10%. And some people think they can't tolerate L-ascorbic acid, but they just can't tolerate super high percentages of it. So having the lower percentage makes it a little more skin friendly if you have sensitive skin. This also has 2% Floritin. Floritin is just a different antioxidant that helps fight pigmentation and kind of speeds up cell turnover. And so it's really nice in the summer because a lot of people show more pigmentation when they have more sun exposure and that helps fight that. At the end of my bottle, that's devastating. So for my face and neck, I usually use like, I don't know, like a third of a dropper. Just drop it into my hands. It's like about six drops, I'd say. Just put it in my hands. You can press and pat or you can swipe. Really doesn't matter. Neck. And then my hands are usually a little damp with it at the end and I definitely put it over the back of my hands because even those that's not showing pigment now, but I treat enough people in their 50s and 60s who are very upset by the pigmentation that's developed on the back of their hands that I know that I need to be protecting this right now. The other thing I really like about this formula is it just feels very lightweight, 
not greasy on the skin. It absorbs in like 30 seconds. So I can just kind of immediately move on to my next skincare step without feeling like I need to sit around in the morning and let it really dry down. For my next step, I am going in with a hyaluronic acid serum. Today, I'm going to be using the Vichy Lift Active Supreme HA Wrinkle Corrector. First of all, there are some brands that are just famous within the dermatology community, and Vichy is one of them, and it's because they put so much time and effort and research into their products to make sure that they're developing things that are safe and effective. So I already like so many Vichy products. I had a feeling I was going to really like this as well. This is a 1.5% pure hyaluronic acid serum and hyaluronic acid serums are humectants. They work by drawing water to the skin surface to make it appear more plump, more rejuvenated, more bouncy, more glowy, all the things we want our skin to look like. Again, like I mentioned, Vichy does the research. So with this this serum, it actually showed a 47% reduction in the appearance of wrinkles and a 60% reduction in the appearance of fine lines after six weeks of consistent use. So it is not just one of those hyaluronic acid serums that's making claims. It's actually shown to be effective. Having rosation sensitive skin, I really appreciate that this product is fragrance free. And then it has, of course, the nourishing Vichy volcanic water, as well as a vitamin C for additional antioxidant support. The way that you use this serum is to take the cap off, turn it upside down. There's like a little squeeze here and you just release like three drops or so into the palm of your hand. That doesn't look like very much, but this product spreads really well and it slips just right over the surface of the skin. So you don't need a lot and a little goes a long way. You could apply this in the morning or in the evening, or it's really gentle enough to use both day and night. Just sort of press it in there. Again, this product just dries down really well. I have tried a ton of hyaluronic acid serums over the years, and a lot of them just don't work well with my skin because they either pill up on the skin or they're like too sticky, so I don't like how they feel, or they just don't layer well with my other products, and I just have not had any issues with the Vichy one. Some people will ask me like, is a hyaluronic acid serum like really necessary? Okay, nothing's necessary in your skincare routine, uh, except for maybe sunscreen, but there there are very few things in skincare that give you immediate results. Usually it's a waiting game for things to kick in and induce cellular change. But humectant serums like hyaluronic acid serums, because they're drawing that water up to your skin surface in real time, you get an immediate boost in how your skin looks and feels and appears to everyone else. And I just find that when I use a serum like this, I get more compliments and who doesn't want more compliments? I have my antioxidant serum on, I have my hyaluronic acid serum on. The next thing I'm going in with is my prescription azelaic acid 15% gel. This is the generic for Phenacea and I use it to help control my rosacea. Azelaic acid is a great ingredient. Some people would call it like a jack of all trades, master of none, because it is not super, super potent, but it is great because it is antimicrobial, it is anti-inflammatory, it fights excess pigment, formation. So it does a lot of things, but for me, I use it mostly for the anti-inflammatory properties. It helps keep my rosacea bumps under control. And it also does help improve my redness to some degree. It has taken me a while to get my rosacea under decent control. Azelaic acid is not the only ingredient out there that helps with that. There are things like ivermectin and metronidazole and oral doxycycline that I use a lot in my practice to help patients with more severe rosacea get control of their disease, but I'm able to use azelaic acid alone for control in addition to using tretinoin in the evening. So I'll just show you kind of the texture. This is generic. It's sort of like a lightweight gel. So I like that if I'm going to layer more than a few things on my skin in the morning, I tend for them to all be sort of lightweight. So I don't feel like I have this like cakey thick mess building up on my skin. Uh, for me, I use about pea sized amount. So about the same amount that I would use of like tretinoin. And I start on my cheeks and I kind of work my way outward. A lot of people want to know like if they're given prescription medications topically, like how do you layer those with your other skincare ingredients? And there is no perfect way to do this. I really encourage you to talk with your dermatologist and strategize together. One, it makes your dermatologist aware of the other products that you're incorporating into your routine. And sometimes they might want you to take some of those out for a little while and then experimentation. So I found that when I layer my azelaic acid 
over my antioxidant and sometimes over my hyaluronic acid serum, I don't have any issues. I still find that it works really, really well. And then azelaic acid is something that can be used morning or night or even twice a day. So a lot of the clinical studies on rosacea have people using azelaic acid twice a day, and that is often how I will prescribe it in my practice. But again, once you've been working with a prescription medication for a while that's topical, you can kind of play with it a little bit to figure out how it works best for you. And now for the grand finale, what do you think it is? Sunscreen. You might be like, Dr. Ellis, you didn't put a moisturizer on. What is wrong with you? Even though my skin tends to be a little bit dry, I do not find that I need an additional moisturizing step in the morning between the hyaluronic acid serum that pulls water to my skin surface and then the occlusion with azelaic acid gel and my sunscreen, that is enough hydration and moisturization for my skin to feel good all day. And then I use a more nourishing, thick moisturizer in the evening. There's nothing that says you need to put a moisturizer on twice a day. Like that is so arbitrary. So you really just need to do what your skin needs and not what the expectation of what a morning or evening skincare routine should be. As you might imagine, being a dermatologist and then also being involved with social media, I have sampled, tested, worn, hundreds of sunscreens and I definitely have some faves. So one that I really, really enjoy is the CanMake Mermaid Skin Gel UV SPF 50 PA++++. When you are choosing a sunscreen, of course you want it to look good on your skin, you want it to feel good on your skin, but you also want it to do its job of protecting your skin from UV damage. And when we think about the type of UV radiation that reaches our skin, it's mostly UVA radiation and UVB radiation. UVB rays traditionally are infamous for causing sunburns and really being the most provocative in terms of causing skin cancer. Whereas UVA rays we think of as more of the aging type of UV radiation that leads to sagging, loss of elasticity, fine lines, as well as irregular pigment in the skin. And you want a sunscreen that's going to protect you from both types of UV radiation. When you look at a sunscreen label, you will have the SPF. That's generally talking more about how well that sunscreen is going to protect you from sunburn. And then you have the PA rating. And again, that's not on every label. This is a Japanese sunscreen. It tends to be more prominently featured on Asian sunscreens. And that PA rating can go anywhere from one plus all the way up to four pluses. And it's talking about how well the sunscreen will protect you from UVA radiation. So when I see something that is SPF 50 with PA plus 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 the max PA rating, I know that this sunscreen is going to be providing really good broad spectrum coverage and protecting me against both skin cancer, but also the signs of aging. I think this is a really nice sunscreen for the summer because it is super lightweight and it rubs in I mean, it rubs in great. It also doesn't have alcohol in it, which I find is pretty rare for such a lightweight sunscreen that rubs in so well. Also, because it is an Asian sunscreen, it has some more advanced UV filters that aren't FDA approved in the United States, but are very, very effective, especially at blocking UVA rays. This is like next level sunscreen, in my opinion. When you are applying sunscreen, you wanna make sure you are applying enough. So really like a full quarter teaspoon for the face. I'm be wearing my hair down today so I'm not really going to be applying much to the back of the neck but I'm going to make sure I'm getting like my entire face my neck back of my hands for sure also I feel like this sunscreen is so good if you have a beard or a mustache or just any other facial hair what other facial hair would you have oh sideburns because it rubs in so well it doesn't cling to hairs and I don't know that from my personal experience, but watching my husband apply this, and I don't know, there's something cute about watching your husband put on mermaid skin gel. You don't wanna overly rub your sunscreen in. I feel like I see sometimes people just like rubbing and rubbing and rubbing, and it's like, gosh, at that point, half your sunscreen's rubbed off your face. So I kinda like rub it in, let it set up. I will probably go back in and put another layer of this on in a second, just because I find with more liquidy sunscreens, rather than trying to put a full quarter teaspoon on at once, I like to put like an eighth of a teaspoon on, let it dry down a little, put a second layer on, and it just, it makes the application a lot easier that way. So going in with my second layer now, make sure we really get the neck, 
You also want to really make sure you hit your ears and like up into your hairline. I find tons of little baby skin cancers, little basal cells and squamous cell carcinomas hanging out on the tops of the ears, especially in guys, but also in women. And then right at the hairline, like up on the top part of the forehead. So you just want to be really mindful of how you're applying your sunscreen because there are some areas in people that just get consistently missed. And it's really that accumulation of UV damage over time that leads to both the signs of aging, but much more importantly, the risk of developing skin cancer. That's all rubbed in. I'm gonna let that set up a little bit. Usually what I do is I'll go make coffee or do some type of other morning task while my sunscreen is fully drying down. And then I can go in with my makeup once everything has set up. Okay, that is my morning skincare routine. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you found it helpful or you learned something new. If you want to hear more from me, I do have my own YouTube channel as well as an Instagram account where I kind of take you behind the scenes, day in the life stuff as a dermatologist. Thank you so much Mixed Makeup for having me back. Total honor, love being here and I'll see you guys again next time. <laughs>